glorify your name in all the earth. man but to you we've been on a journey of 21 days fast and today is the 15th day so Lord we now ask that as we contemplate the teaching of the word specific to this season we ask Lord that you will grant great grace you will grant great glory Amen. that there will be a mighty outpouring of your power tonight Amen. let these three days be a day of three days be days of encounter Amen. let our lives never remain the same Amen. we promise to return the glory to you lord jesus Amen. thank you holy spirit of god Amen. do what only you can do Amen. change lives Amen. transform destinies Amen. heal bodies Amen. save souls Amen. thank you eternal father Amen. let the light of your word enlighten us let it not just be a time to just discuss or have conversations, but a time to have memorable experiences. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, let's take our seats. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. You're welcome, especially to tonight's very, very special occasion. And um, we will be taking this session of word in the next couple of days three days i'd like us to please note it um some it's likely going to be transcribed into a book those that are concerned to helping me doing that will will help me take note of it this is spirit life conference and um i come with the greetings of the holy ghost tonight i come with the power of the holy spirit and my intention is to do that, that which he has asked me to do. It is important that in the journey of faith, we 
obedience to the leading of God's Spirit is key. Obedience is key. Obedience is key. Obedience might not be the door, but it is key. It is what will bring you into new levels of victories, new levels of testimonies. So I want us to please be very yielded to the Spirit of God that as we have these conversations tonight, we note them down. And the things the Spirit of God is saying you should do, note them down. Don't, um, don't leave it to guesswork. Amen. Amen. So let's start our discussion tonight from the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And we're going to start from verse 1. For the sake of time, let's dash down to verse 8. Verse 8. Then the king of Syria, I'm reading 2 Kings 6, verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall my, be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him off, and saved himself there not once nor twice. Verse 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel. Tell the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. Verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host encompassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full. Please underline that word. Full of horses and chariots of fire round about El Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people. I pray thee with blindness, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the attendance anointing tonight once again in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want us to take a, an introduction into the spirit life. It's a spirit life conference, and I will be speaking tonight about introduction into the spirit life introduction into the spirit life and it is my objective that in the next three days you will not only understand the realm of the spirit to a degree but you will understand how to transact in the realm of the spirit Amen. how to negotiate in the realm of the spirit Amen. how to get results 
from the realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit is a very, very real world. It is actually and arguably more real than the world that we live in today. The word of God says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, it says, By faith we understand that the world that we see was made out of the word of God, such that the things that we now do see were made out of the things that were not seen. God has ordained that this world we live in, the planet Earth, is precious to him. And God made man on this earth. Because God is spirit, he made spirit of a man, or he made man a spirit. And then what he did next was that he gave man a very unique ability called will and flesh. Will and flesh. And those two things especially have served as God's, so to speak, restrain from having his free course upon man. The flesh and the will. What do I call it, please? The flesh and the will. So God made man in his image and in his likeness. In John chapter 4, please, we're going to be checking a lot of scriptures and quoting a lot of scriptures so we note them down. In John chapter 4, verse 24, the word of God says that God is spirit, and they that must worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. In other words, you cannot have real conversations with God without a spiritual reality. Once upon a time, an elderly man came who was a very big man in town. His name was called Nicodemus. And then he came to Jesus Christ by night in John chapter 3 and said, we have known that, he said, Rabbi, we have seen that no man can do the things you do no man can command the kind of results you are commanding without God being with him. Without spirits being present. It's, these things have gone past human endeavor. And Jesus, without thinking very deep, said, Ha! Huh, for you to do this, you need to be born of water and of the spirit. Do you remember that scripture? He said, you need to be born of water and of spirit. So to say, Although man was spirit, man needed to be born again. And I will explain that. Because without man even being born again, man was spirit already. Whatever God creates is permanent forever. It's spiritual. That's why you cannot eventually destroy the devil. Because what God has created can never die. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's no amount of times you cast out Satan that he will ever be dead. Spirits don't die. You need to understand that. So God created spirits. Everything God touched is spiritual. Everything. Everything. When God made even the garden of Eden, it was spiritual. It was spiritual in nature. The fruit was spiritual. Everything God created was spiritual. You need to understand that. The one I like the most that I read in scriptures is that swords too are spiritual. Oh yes. The only weapon that we see was ever described in scripture was the sword. That's why swords are powerful. Sword. Even the word of God is likened to a sword. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says in Revelation, that when Jesus Christ was, it says the words from his mouth were like arrows of swords piercing out. Sword. So sword can be spiritual. Can you imagine that? Amazing. So the, that we are talking about something being spiritual does not mean it's not real. It only means it is not visible to these optical eyes. And what that means is that for as long as we are not introduced or so to speak initiated into that realm of the unseen, we are likely going to be undermining our capacity, our inheritance, our blessings and our victories. Using the story of Elisha that we just read as an example, Elisha was able to hear what the king was saying in his bedroom. That's spiritual. That's spiritual. It was not demon voodoo. It was spiritual. Pure spiritual. Now, the question I ask, those that knew that it was Elisha, why couldn't they do anything to him? Because they also were watching him spiritually. If you read that scripture, it was a case of diviners. It was spiritual. When God wanted to release the children of Israel from Egypt, 
God gave Moses a rod. Actually, it was Moses' rod. The same rod. And God said, that rod is not ordinary rod. Though. What you are holding that you call natural can become a living thing. Yeah. Yeah. That rod that looked like something he picked on the floor. God said, I can turn it into a snake for you. <laughs> and then it's amazing. And then God says, drop it on the floor. Let me show you something today. The same rod you are holding. Drop it. There's something that converted that rod into spirit. Yes. That made the rod become a living snake. <laughs> and then God said, I want to show you the power that is behind this spiritual thing. Hold the snake by the tail. <laughs> I won't do it. <laughs> it does not make sense. How do you say snake? That, first of all, I'm still disenfranchised from the reality that my rod has become a snake. You now say, pick it up from the tail. <laughs> That's very, very poor advice. What am I trying to bring to your attention? These things you see that you call natural have spiritual substance. When God was talking and through Jesus Christ said, you shall say to the mountain, be thou moved into the sea. That means he was talking like he knew that the mountain has intelligence. That this mountain can hear what we are saying. How can he be saying we should talk to a mountain? That is ridiculous. So is it possible that there are things around us that we should be talking to that we are not talking to? Is it possible that there's a realm that we are, we are there and we are just not getting the best of the realm that we belong to? This is where I come from. And the next three days, it is my attempt to help an average believer be educated about the realm of the spirit. Where he can understand that the God we serve that has given birth to us in Christ has made us so powerful that we literally can speak to inanimate objects and they respond. That's what I'm talking about here. Spirit life. There is a spirit life. Someone said, there's a spirit life. There is a spirit life. Jesus was talking in John chapter 6, verse 63. He said, The words I speak, he says, It's the spirit that quickeneth. That's how he started. He says, The spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. He said, For the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Very powerful. So we need to start to look into this realm of spirit. Why, why do we need to consider this spirit life experience? Let me quickly justify the reason for the study. Number one, we are born of the spirit. We are born of the spirit. Our origin is spiritual. We are born of, do you agree with what I'm saying? Yes, we are born of the spirit. Jesus said, whoever is born of the water and of the spirit. Water there speaks about when your water breaks, amen? But spirit is different, sir. When a child wants to be born, he says, my water broke. Am I correct? Yes, so that is one. The spirit is <laughs> spirit. Now, some people interpret it to mean what are being truth as the word of God and the spirit. I agree. Either of them is correct. But from literal explanation, what are being my water broke and my spirit broke. Amen. You see that we give birth to spirits. Amen. amen. Can I hear your amen there? Amen. So we have, if you are not spiritually born, you are not born again. Why is it necessary to be born again? Because although man remains a spirit, he cannot operate at the full capacity of his spirit because of sin nature. That is why we need to receive Christ into our lives. What happens to us is that we become like the God that created us. Now let's look at something. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Like I said, we're going to do some Bible study and all of that. This is a conference and I want us to please be scholastic about it a bit. We'll do some doctrine, we'll do some teaching, and then we'll do some preaching and then we'll do some prophetic. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, it says, For whosoever, whatsoever, beg your pardon, is born of God. Hallelujah. Is anybody born of God here? Yeah. The Bible says whatsoever. He uses the language what, not who. Because anything can be born of God. A business can be born of God. An idea can be born of God. Anything born of God. The Bible says overcomes the world. It overcomes the world. It has inside of it, inherently, the ability to overcome. This is important because some of us have ideas that we are afraid if it will succeed. It is impossible for it to fail. That idea cannot fail. Why? It is born of God. So 1 John 5, 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Look at the next verse, verse 5. Give me verse 5. It says, it says Who is he that is born, that overcometh the world? It says, 
but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So he's saying, who is he that will, is going to overcome the word that we're talking about? Is he that, how many of us believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yeah. He says in John 1.12, he says, for as many as believed upon him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. So now are we the sons of God, First John 3 says. Now are we the sons of God, glory to God. Not tomorrow, we are the sons of God today. Why? Because we are born of the Spirit. Someone say, I'm born of the Spirit. Of the, Spirit. the Spirit of God gave birth to us by faith in Christ Jesus. We are not just ordinary people, saints. We were given back to by faith in Christ Jesus. Our faith in Christ just allowed us to be initiated into the life of God. In Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 5, let's, let's look at 3, 16 and 17. So the first reason is why we are considering this subject quickly is because we are born of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 now to Abraham and his seed give me verse 17 this is not what I want to see I'll come back to it, it's in my notes so let me take it according to my notes alright, so let's flow along these lines now, hear this, so the first reason is because we are born of God are you with me tonight? say it confidently, say I'm born of God I am born of so God. I have a legitimate right to the realm of the spirit say I am spirit the Bible says God is spirit and those that must worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. That means when you are not conscious of your spiritual identity, listen to me folks, you are really not worshipping God yet. The Bible tells us clearly that we are spirit, soul and body. See what it says, First Thessalonians 5 verse 23. It says, and now may the very God of peace sanctify you spirit, soul and body. We are spirit, soul and body. So we are spirit. See after me say man is spirit. He has a soul and he lives in the body so we are spirits we are spirits we are spirit we'll be considering these subjects in three dimensions one because man is essentially a spirit then we talk about it in terms of the spiritual realm that realm that exists and then number three how to live cons you know consanguineously between this life and that life simultaneously do you understand what I'm saying so you are spirit there's a spirit realm and then how you live the two worlds simultaneously that's the objective of this discussion so that you will see some things now so number one why are we considering this subject because we are spirits we're born of the spirit number two because we live in the spirit i have a number of them so let's quickly take them quickly number two because we live in the spirit in acts 17 28 it says in him i live in him i move in him i have my being we live in the spirit in galatians 5 verse 16 and 17 galatians 5 verse 16 and 17 i'd like to read that and then we'll read verse 27 also galatians 5 16 and 17 if you will it says there and this okay galatians 5 16 says then i say then walk in the spirit walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh go to 27 so I'll come back to 16 because that 16 is my next point. Go to 27. Does he have 27 or 21? Hurry up, please. Do you have 21? If you have 21 there. It looks like you're using different Bibles. It has 21 now. Okay, so go to 27. You should have 20. It does have 27. 26. 25 thank you 25 yeah look how it says it says there that's what i want to say if we live in the spirit did you see that in your bible did you see it galatians 5 i beg your pardon on that please galatians 5 25 it says if then we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit i want to please note that so my number two reason why we are studying this is because the bible says if we live in this it's already taking it that you know if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit why is this important now let's quickly take the next point and i'll take number four to explain why this point is important number three is that we walk in the spirit we walk in the spirit i'll explain it just be patient with me we walk in the spirit so number one is that we're born in the spirit why are we so studying this subject number one we're born in the spirit we're spiritual people or we're spirit beings number two we live in the spirit galatians chapter 5 verse 25 we live in the spirit then number four three is that we walk in the spirit 
by walk means that we should take steps in the spirit now why is this important i want to share with us because we are number four we are also blessed in the spirit our blessings are in the spirit sir our real territory is not this place so a christian can be so wealthy and broke on this earth but his wealth is a billionaire in the spirit now you and i know that we don't need that billions in the spirit we need it here sir our blessings the bible says that blessed be god the father of our lord jesus christ who hath blessed us somebody say blessed us bless say loud and clear say blessed me. Bless me say it again say blessed me bless god is not about to bless you he has credited your account yes. now the challenge you will have is that it is spiritual it is unfair for you to say you are not rich it is unfair because what god has done for you is stupendous wealth the bible says in second corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 the one we popularly put is that for we know the grace of our lord jesus christ towards us in that he was rich yet for our sakes he became poor how did he become poor so that you and i become rich someone say i'm rich the point i'm trying to make is that that means some of us have inheritances in the spirit that if you don't know how to get it it will rot there you will be you'll be a billionaire only in the spiritual and you and i know that it's not in heaven you want to spend billions praise god so number four reason is because without this study we will not explore our riches in christ jesus we need to explore our blessings what we've been blessed as ephesians 1 3 says blessed be god the father of our love our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings somebody say i'm blessed, I'm blessed. say one more time say i'm blessed. I'm blessed so we live in the spirit we walk in the spirit we, we we were born in the spirit we live in the spirit we walk in the spirit we we also have our inheritance in the spirit number four we war in the spirit we fight in the spirit yeah you know what i'm talking about the bible says that for we rest not against flesh and blood are you aware yes, yes. tells us clearly it's not flesh and blood it's not flesh and blood so we don't fight physical we fight in the spirit we fight in the spirit believe it or not in the course of this journey i'll be talking about dreams visions how that people can lose in a dream and lose in reality because you lost in a dream yeah how that god still shows things through dreams might not be his major word-based way of talking but god still shows dreams glory to god the same way he warned joseph he can still be warning you he might be warning you for nigeria he might be warning you for your family god still shows dreams glory to god very true don't be deceived the realm of the spirit number four five reason why we need to study it is because we war we fight in the spirit number six because possibilities avail in the realm of the spirit it is in the realm of the spirit you can negotiate things you can go to your past and correct it you can go to your future and prepare it you can work on your present and determine it it is in the realm of the spirit you can't do that physically It's in the realm of the spirit number seven reason is because in the realm of the spirit our true identity is revealed jesus talking said i can call my father now to give me a legion of angels right now he said don't you know who i am they say is it true you are the king of the of, of israel he said yes you said it i am ah, how can you be your true identity is not this physical user Lazarus they consider to be a poor man when he died he was at Abraham's bosom that is a spiritual identity don't be deceived based on your physical status there is a true identity the Bible says we are in Christ glory to God he said we are seated in Christ he said we are seated in Christ where Christ is seated by the right hand of God the Father ladies and gentlemen I've come to remind you that you are not an ordinary person I say I've come to remind you you are not an ordinary person I said we are not ordinary people here glory to god Hallelujah. we have life in the spirit we are not empty we can correct things that are wrong listen the next thing i want to draw your attention to is that the realm of the spirit determines what happens in the realm of the physical we need to study it what happens in the realm of the spirit determines what happens in the physical the first scripture one of the early scriptures i quoted earlier on was hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 the bible says that the thing that we see today was created from the things that we don't see in romans chapter 1 it says that the things that we see in this life help us understand the things we don't see 
so there's a realm of the spirit and, and this is so important that we are able to understand what's going on look at the story of job you can read it at home job chapter 1 from verse 6 the bible says that the sons of god came to present themselves to god and that satan also came and god asked him where have you been you satan and it have been going to and through the earth this earth is interesting because spirits want to participate spirits is a spiritual world and like i said we're going to be considering the spirits the spirits tonight is, I, I told you that the title of tonight's discussion is introduction into the spiritual to the spirit realm and we're looking at the spirits the spiritual and the spiritual life so that's how i want to analyze it the spirits man and spirit there's a spirit there's a spirit in you job 32 verse 8 says there's a spirit in man the inspiration of the almighty giveth him understanding so we know that what is discussed and then satan discussed with god about job and said oh job does job serve you for nothing is it not because you've kept a helm around him and all that concerns him so although job did not know there was something covering him something is covering you sir Amen. i said something is covering you Amen. i said something is covering you from tonight Amen. now something has always been covering you but from tonight, become conscious. Something strong is covering you. He said, does Job serve you for nothing? He said, Job does not serve you for nothing. Because you cover him and all that concerns him. Let's look at it. Job 1. It's important to refer to it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. That's a very reckless man. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is, there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, God's pride, one time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Did you get that there? <laughs> one that feared God and eschewed evil. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Verse 10. Has not thou made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? <laughs> there is an edge around him. About all that he has. There is an edge around your phone. There is an edge around your shoe. There is an edge around your family. Your amen doesn't believe it. I said there is an edge around you, sir. There is an edge around you, I'm telling you. There is an edge keeping you secure. Amen. You don't need to be seen physically. There is an edge keeping you. Say so it's keeping him, his house, and all that he has. Wonderful. Nothing will miss in your life again in the name Amen. of Jesus. That's why I personally take it seriously when something misses in my life. I take it seriously. Because something broke the edge. No. I take it seriously. We don't miss things here. Nothing escapes us. Glory to God. I said glory to God. That's another very important reason why we need to study this area. A lot of Christians are theoretical victors. They only know their victory in theory. They have never been able to embrace it in reality. From this conference, you will embrace your own. Can I hear your believing? Amen. And finally, for the reason why we are studying this is because from the realm of the spirit, the concerns of our life is determined. The concerns of our life is determined. Is determined. We have discussed that we are spirits. We live in a realm of the spirit right now, real time. And we just shared why are we considering this subject. So there is such a thing as the realm of the spirit. It is defined. The realm of the spirit therefore is defined as the realm of the unseen to the physical eyes. The realm of the unseen to the optical eyes physical eyes but to the spiritual eyes it can be seen did you hear what i just said now you may know or may not know it it might be proven or not proven i'm not ready to go into that but there are some animals that see the realm of the spirit faster do you believe dogs of them they do they can sense something going on even horses because their loyalty is more towards man now listen god made us spirits gave us a soul 
those two will be useful in the world after then give us a body this body we speak of is what we use to interact with this earth so although you are standing here there are many more things standing beside you but because they don't have a physical body you cannot see them so elisha said god open his eyes he could have passed beside those angels as chariots of fire i don't know and they were burning fire and just walk past <coughs> and walk past and go and not know that there were angels there to defend them there are spiritual things you need to become aware of you need to start to trust God to open the eyes of your understanding so that you can see things and the advantages you have in the realm of the spirit. Elisha was a man of like passion, the Bible says. Elijah, I mean. But then Elisha followed after Elijah. Then we can see that if Elisha saw that, there are things you too can see. Look at Daniel. Daniel negotiated his way in the realm of the spirit. They said, we're going to kill you if you don't know my dream. A dream had a king had a dream, forgot his dream, did not know the interpretation. He said, If you cannot tell me the dream, you forgot. So, when I tell you, how will you know that this is the dream? Ah. And you can't fake any dream. Yes. It's such that God locked it up that only the speaker, when you say the right thing, it will unlock the code. So, when Daniel came, he said, Why is the king hasty? Let the king give himself some time. We'll be back to you. Daniel went somewhere knowing that in the realm of the spirit he can move things he can recalibrate the discussion I'm convinced that many of us are not exploring our advantages in the realm of the spirit I'm convinced that business by now should be bigger than this that relationship can be sweeter than this protection is available provision is available and it's my prayer that from this discussion things will change forever in the name of Jesus Christ. The realm of the spirit is such a very practical one that the word of God says that the heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord and that you can control it spiritually. Proverbs 21 verse 1. The heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord and like the river course of water you can control the heart of a king. So we are seeing here that God has reposed so much for us in the realm of the spirit that it's our responsibility to press in on it and to explore its potentials can i hear your believing amen? amen in an attempt to ensure that we are well guided in the realm of the spirit god gave us the holy spirit gave us the holy spirit as our mentor as our guide as our forerunner as our everything because man is vulnerable to the spiritual world now let me just make this a little illustrative i used to say that in the realm of the spirit it's very open in the realm of the spirit if god grants you a chance to see it you will understand that it's not only christians that live there no everything spiritual can access the realm of the spirit everything spiritual everything spiritual is like markets <laughs> And they know each person. Those demons talking in Acts 19 said, Paul, we know. Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. How? Where do they know him? Where? In the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit, not in the realm of the physical. They may never have even seen Paul before that time. Say, this Paul, we know him. Why? Because everybody has identity in the realm of the spirit. Now listen to this. In the realm of the spirit also, there are protocols.
Clatumba da da babro di boko se se di bashataria. Riga da bre di boso se di boshte kle te blege zosa ne mushta. Clanto pe kesi ni matadia da broko se se. In Jesus' name we pray. In the realm of the spirits, there are protocols, and there is authority. Please write that down. In the realm of the spirit, there are protocols on there, or there is protocol and there is authority. Jesus Christ attained the highest authority in the realm of the spirit. When the Bible says that he made captivity captive and he led a public show of them, before who? Where did he do it? In the realm of the spirit. Who are those watching? That the Bible says he ridiculed the realm of the spirit. I mean, the devil. Who are those watching? It was the realm of the spirit. These sons of God that came to present themselves is in the realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit is such a very enriched realm that if you can determine things from there, that's why Jesus was talking. He said, what things soever you desire, I'm, uh, I beg your pardon, he said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and then it shall be done for you in the physical. Then in Matthew 18, it says, where two or three agree as touching anything, it shall be done by my Father who is in heaven. So the realm of the Spirit is a very... And let me tell you one thing that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help us operate at our habit, in our habitat. Because the best place for your operation is not the physical. I'm trying to simply say, become more conscious of your place of advantage. Yes! What I'm, what I'm trying to say to you is that you will, you see, you know I gave an illustration some time back. I said, when a snake wants to fight, it will rather fight on the ground. Yes, Take it to the air. He has lost the game from day one. Bring an alligator, a crocodile, upon some terrain. They can't sustain. A shark is useless on land. Put him in sea. You will see his habitat. Eh? A monkey has his habitat yes, on trees. Yes, he will mesmerize lions. Did you see that video before? He will, he will ridicule lions. It's his territory. He knows the territory. Sir, you will lose battles if you stay in the wrong territory. You will lose gallantly. You will, you will think that you are not good because you are operating outside your habitat. Man's territory is spirit. There's little we can really get done on it. And some people who we call unbelievers understand this thing. They enter into this conversation. Now quickly, let's introduce it. Man has his legal right to penetrate into the realm of the spirit instantly. He doesn't need to go, you know, sometimes people conjure it. I ask some sisters, do you pray in tongues or do you speak in tongues? She, or in spirit, I ask you spirit, in spirit, you know, that's how we ask it. She says, when, when I feel like it's powerful. You don't need to feel it. You don't need to feel it. We are not called to feelings. We are called to knowings. Yes, sir. And this is so important. Because many times, people stay in the flesh. And now, let me quickly show you something. I promised I was going to show it to you earlier on. So let's go to it now. Galatians 5, verse 16 and 17. We need to make clear... That you will not win effectively staying in the flesh. Chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. Can we read it? It says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. What, does it means, what it means there is the cravings of your flesh. Your flesh is in opposition. Look at the next verse, verse 17. For the flesh, do you have another translation? For the flesh lost it against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another. Let's look at it in message. Now, give us 16 so that we can read 17 right. Message translation. 16 so that we can read 17 right. My counsel is this. Live freely, animated, and motivated by God's spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. That is the flesh. Now watch this with me. Next verse. For there is a root of, a, of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit. 
Just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness, these two ways of life are antithetical. Antithetical. So that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel on any given day. Did you see that in your Bible? Should I explain some more? Before I explain, let's go to Romans 8. He's saying that, that your flesh is worrying after your spirit. Your flesh doesn't want your spirit to do what it wants to do. Your spirit is saying, I don't like what you are doing. Your flesh is saying, I don't like what you are doing. So it is one that must rule the other. Quickly, let's look at the scriptures. Romans 8 from verse 6. Quickly, please. Then we open 1 Corinthians 2. Quickly. I want to read them before we close tonight. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open. Can you give me Amplified Classic? I think it will do me justice here. Amplified Classic. Let's hear what Amplified Classic says. <clears throat> now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason, without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that comp comprises all the miseries, miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. But is hostile to God, for it does not submit They are spiritually dead. You know what we call spirit life? Some people are spirit dead already as I'm speaking. Their spirit man is dead. You know why? Because they allow their flesh rule over their spirit. They, don't, they can't make sense of spiritual things. They are born again. Please note it. They are born again, but they are carnal. They are not just natural. They are carnal. You see, everybody has three states. It's either you are spiritual, you are carnal, or natural. Let's look at the last scripture that I quoted. First Corinthians chapter two and verse six. Uh, let's start from verse nine. We read that. We take some prayers and we close. Are we getting blessed tonight, please? So I'm going to take you on a journey tomorrow. How to transact in the realm of the spirit? How to negotiate things out? How to revisit history, correct it in the present, and preset it for the future? Those are the things I intend to show us. I hope it will be worth your time. Amen. First Corinthians 2 verse 9. But on the contrary, as, can, you, can you give me KJV so that I can stay clear with this? please? KJV. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things... Come on, let's start from verse 6, please. Please. Let's start from verse 6 quickly, please. Verse 6. How be it, notice this, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. 
Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. Verse 7, watch this. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Somebody says for our glory. Now look at what it says. Which none of the princes of the world knew. So there were princes of this world that can be ignorant. He said, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Did you see that in your Bible, please? So there is there are something we call princes of the world. They are the principalities of the world. That's different from the devil. Remember, it says that we rest not against flesh and blood, but against um, principalities and, and powers. There are princes, 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 palities and powers. Princes, palities. I just want to highlight the princes there. Then it says, we rest not against them. And it says, but the prince of the world. Now it now says in verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things God hath prepared for them that love him. Where is he preparing it? Where is it? Where is it? Come and see. Look at it next verse. But God had revealed them unto us by his by his by his for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of god look at verse 11 it says for what man knows the, where the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him what that means is that nobody can know what is inside of you except your spirit man nobody god does not do olufufu just anyhow to everybody God will only tell people about somebody else when it is for a righteous cause. Yes, it's true. But what is inside of me, you don't know, sir. You don't know. A man can be looking at you like this and is thinking of blessing you. And you think he's angry with you. God makes sure that every human being is a sovereign entity. Nobody can know, nobody can intrude on you anyhow. That's very important. Even God doesn't intrude on us anyhow. So he says, he says, what man knoweth the things of man? He says, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now watch this, verse 12. But look at what it says. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Are you there with me tonight? That we might know. Someone said that we might know. That we might know. Not that we might feel, but we might know. Not that we should see, but we should know. Someone said no. no. Know the things that are freely given to us. There are things freely given to you, sir. Someone say, I receive them. I receive them. Say it again. Say, there are things freely given to us. It's so true. Some people, you are looking for a baby. A baby is freely given to you. What are those things that have been freely given to you? Is it true some things have been freely given to you and you are feeling broke? Let me read it on. I need to stop somewhere. Watch this. Take me somewhere. Verse 13. Which things also we speak. He's saying the things that have been freely given to us, we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things. Are you seeing it tonight? With spiritual. Saying that, look, we're not showing you natural things. We're not showing you physical things. The things that have been freely given to you are spiritual things. With spiritual. That means you don't know spiritual, you don't know your things. If you don't know spiritual things, you will never know your things. If you don't understand spiritual things, you will never inherit that which has been given to you freely. You'll be paying for what has been given to you. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't be begging for what has been given to you. In such situations, what do you do? You dominate. You dominate. You dominate. See what it says. It says, but the natural man. So we see that I told you about something about carnal man, natural man, and spiritual man. The carnal man is the man that doesn't even have God in his mind. It's just ordinary man floating. The natural man is the Christian who is thinking at a level that is not spiritual. There are many Christians like that. They see things only in the natural. See what happens to them. Look at this, this verse. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. He doesn't receive it. You are telling him, let's do this. He doesn't he's believe that. He is not an unbeliever. But he is not receiving the things of God. He says, give it to me in that scripture, please, if you don't mind. He says, for they are foolishness unto him. They don't make sense. May the things of God make sense to you. 
He said, they are foolishness. What are you people doing in church? You are just, just saying, it's Jesus name. I have life. It's Jesus name. It's amen. It's just, what are you two people doing? All you know says, he is a natural man. Yes, when we talk, it is foolishness to him. Yes, sir. Now imagine you feeling bad. That a man is not seeing the wisdom you are operating on. You are now trying to do things to make him happy and say, actually, see, yeah, actually, that's that's what they say we should do. I don't even understand what I'm doing. Ah. We just be saying just him, I have life, it's just him, all this ours. You know, we we'll be saying this is all this is what we not even say. Do you, do you understand? You are leaving your habitat, you are deranking yourself, you are losing your brain and your mind to please someone with a natural mind natural the bible says natural he didn't use a sore word against them he said they are natural natural there are carnal christians there are natural people and then there are spiritual which one are you see what it says it says they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually spiritually discerned you would take a food and you know that that food was poisoned how do you know it is spiritually discerned you see a boss and you know don't enter this boss how do you know sir it is spiritually discerned a lady walks into your house you can spiritually discern the spirit walking in her let's come to business you see a business and you can discern that in five years this is where the world will need it and then you go and wait for them five years ahead of time to pioneer that territory they are not naturally discerned they are spiritually if you don't go by the spirit you will never discern them so like i said earlier on you can have treasures in the realm of the spirit but they are not working for you because you are not discerning spiritually so you get up from here now you just walk like an ordinary person you are not an ordinary person again you must understand listen to me that you are hungry on earth doesn't mean that you are broke in heaven when the children of israel were, were hungry god showed them that i have food in heaven for you yes. tomorrow we'll be looking at the wisdom of entering the realm of the spirit and bringing things from the spirit into the physical do you understand what i'm saying We'll be considering how to move things from the realm of the spirit into the realm of physical. Let me just quickly say to you, your blocks to the realm of the spirit include your mind. Your mind. It is one major entrance into the realm of the spirit. Your mind. God made that mind and that mind is spiritual. Your mind will never die. Your mind will never die. God made your mind and it's spiritual. The other thing that helps you access the realm of the spirit eh, are your words your mind your words we'll be talking about that tomorrow the tools of engagement include wisdom faith the fear of God obedience those are the tools for transaction that we move things from the realm of the spirits into the realm of the physical we will take that tomorrow but this spirit life is real sir this spirit life is not a joke and the more aware we are the more alive we are to god for god is spirit your christian life begins to make more sense because you are operating from the realm of the spirits when you come to lead worship, you are not looking around and saying, let me sing this song that will make this one laugh. No. You are sp singing spiritual songs. You are singing spiritual songs because you are full of the Spirit. Now let me just say this. The realm of the Spirit is not boring. It's not boring. You know, because sometimes that's what scares some people. They don't want to go there. It's not boring. How do I know? The Word of God says, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. <laughs> There's liberty, there's freedom. So, so as I'm talking about the realm of spirit, someone's thinking that we now start to walk. Oh, oh boy, not me and you. How we run? I, I can't accommodate boredom. I can't. 
we rejoice in the realm of the spirits we rejoice in the realm of the spirits we rejoice in the realm of the spirits we make our joy in the name of the lord the bible says that the joy of the lord is our strength he said with joy shall you draw water out of the well of your salvation he says in the presence of god there's fullness of you can't be carrying all that you are not spiritual with your bottom it's not possible sir spirituality will liberate you i need to add that because this invitation should not scare you it's a place of rejoicing you check your pocket you feel you don't have money you are saying glory to god glory to god glory to god it's not about that because we know we know we know we know something we know something that is not common we know something we know something we don't make losses here we don't get confused here we are making progress we are taking side strides we are taking strides we are making progress consistent with the will of god we make consistent progress we don't look after the flesh we don't look after the ordinary in the realm of the spirit we see possibilities we see the glory of god hallelujah 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 hear me people of god i said earlier on that in the realm of the spirit you can tweak things again the mistake of your parents you can correct them again your past you can realign it again whatever fashion of yourself you desire you can reconfigure it again so in the realm of the spirit we are not dull people we are not just confused we don't look at all no there's joy in our hearts there's joy in our hearts there's joy in our hearts there's excitement in our spirits there's joy in our hearts come on go ahead and give us some praise tonight go ahead and bless the name of the lord hallelujah 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 thank you father we give you all the praise and the glory so father we enter into your word tonight as round one we'll take the conversation tomorrow lord spirit of god lead us as spirit there is us let your power be released upon us let the experience of the spirit begin tonight for everyone make someone be conscious of his role and his position in the spirit i pray father that the clearer revelation of the abundance we have will be granted to us that no one will be stranded here forever thank you precious father in jesus precious name we pray can we give the lord the roundest the loudest that we can the biggest the biggest the biggest the roundest the biggest please be seated in god's presence package your gifts to god at this time let's give to the most high and then we'll just close the service and jesus is lord tomorrow we'll continue by six and i want us to take more time in the word i have a lot of things in practical examples i want to share with us practical examples from health to wealth to social relationship how to stay how to negotiate to pray in the realm of the spirit why is prayer necessary how is prayer a conduit for the power of god to flow when the bible says that and god has given to him a name that is above every other name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow what does it mean what does it mean he said on things on earth on things under the earth on things in the you know i mean over in the world to come whether princes or is it they must all bow what are those things in the future what are those things that are under the earth all of them submit to this jesus and you are in christ praise god Hallelujah. i say you are in christ completely Hallelujah. someone say i'm complete in him you are not partial in him you are complete sir you are complete in christ we're not partial we are complete but such a joy such a consolation such a consolation sometimes you look at your background and ask can i ever make it you are complete in christ you have made it sir i say you have made it sir the biggest part of your journey was to be in christ now that you are in christ 
may the benefits be unleashed in your direction Amen. i said may the benefits be unleashed in your direction Amen. thank you father lift up your offerings let's pray father we thank you for the opportunity to give we give lord rejoicing give lord grateful in jesus name we pray amen, amen. let's just we come to you. you can do your transfers accordingly the lord bless